Hi, I'm Dr. David Bernstein. I'm the director of the Advanced Wellness Center in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And I want you to know that you are hot. And I'm not talking about how you look. I'm talking about inflammation. We all have some degree of inflammation. And in this video, I'm going to define what inflammation is. I'm going to explain what causes it. And I'm going to describe the link between inflammation and all the major diseases that plague our society. So let me start by saying that in the short run, inflammation is good for you. It's a protective mechanism and it gets activated when your body has been damaged or attacked or threatened in any way. It causes an alarm to go off which then mobilizes your immune system, particularly your white blood cells. The white blood cells are your body's soldiers and they protect those areas of your body that are under attack. Once the root cause of your inflammation is under control, the immune system then calms down and the inflammation subsides. The problem occurs when the immune system doesn't calm down because the root cause of your problem is still active and so the battle continues to rage. This causes the inflammation button to get stuck in the on position and it's this prolonged inflammation known as chronic inflammation that leads to all the major diseases including heart disease, stroke, cancer, diabetes, arthritis, Alzheimer's, autism, and the whole host of other conditions. Now, I believe in global warming, but not the way Al Gore does. I believe that people all over the world are dying from inflammation. And if we can control inflammation and put that fire out, we can then eliminate virtually all of these diseases. And I believe that we have the capacity to extinguish that fire. The medical profession has been trying to control inflammation for decades, but they've not been successful. One of the main reasons is that many of the drugs that they've used have had devastating side effects and have resulted in many deaths. For example, Vioxx killed more than 60,000 people in the U.S. alone, and it caused more than 140,000 heart attacks and strokes. Even though Vioxx has been taken off the market, there are still a lot of people experiencing serious side effects from some of the other anti-inflammatory medications, such as steroids like cortisone and the non-steroidals like aspirin or Celebrex. And that's why a great deal of the research that's being conducted today for inflammation is being directed toward natural products because there are virtually no side effects and they can be extremely effective in reducing inflammation. Let's take a look at some of the common causes of inflammation. And I believe there are seven main causes and they include number one, trauma such as car accidents, sports injuries, Number two, infections like the flu virus or bacterial infections. Number three, toxins like medications, vaccinations, pesticides, heavy metals like mercury and lead. Number four, stress. When you're under a great deal of stress for long periods of time, it causes your adrenal glands to secrete high levels of cortisol, which results in inflammation. Number five is genetics. Genetics can play a significant role in determining how easy it is to turn your inflammation switch on and off. Some people are genetically predisposed to being inflamed, so they have to be extra careful in how they maintain their body. Remember that the game of life is like playing poker. It's not so much the cards that you're dealt, rather it's how you play the hand that counts. Number six is aging. How we age is highly dependent upon inflammations. inflammation. Studies show that senior citizens who are frail have the highest amount of inflammation in their bodies, whether it's in their joints, their circulatory system, their brain, doesn't matter. Aging and inflammation have a looping effect. As the body gets older, it begins to decline and break down. And as it breaks down, it produces more inflammatory molecules that feed the fire. And as the fire continues to spread, more of the body breaks down. So round and round we go. The bottom line is we need to put out the fire. And number seven is diet. Diet is one of the primary sources of inflammation and it's the one that's easiest to control. The standard American diet is loaded with foods that cause inflammation such as 
sugar, wheat, dairy, and beef. And on my next video, I'm going to provide a lot more detail about proper foods to eat and nutritional supplements and lifestyle changes necessary for reducing the inflammation. Let's take a look on the cellular level how inflammation spreads throughout the body and causes all the major degenerate diseases that plague our society. Let's begin with America's favorite pastime, which is eating. So as we eat our food, we chew it up real well, or we should be chewing it up really well. Unfortunately, most people don't. I think they have, think they have teeth in their stomach. So it's really important to chew your food well so it gets absorbed more effectively. So the food then passes through your esophagus, gets into your stomach, then it passes through into your small intestine, and then from the small intestine it passes down into the large intestine. So let's go back up to the small intestine. The small intestine is the area of the body where all the good stuff that the body wants, wants gets, gets absorbed into your system. The large intestine is where all the waste products go, such as undigested fiber and things like that that the body does not want to absorb will pass down and gets passed out of your body as you move your bowels. But the small intestine is the key area we want to focus on because that's where all the good stuff gets absorbed into your body. So in the lining of the small intestine, we have cells. And it forms what we call a tight junction barrier. They should fit together nice and tightly. And as you eat certain foods, that can cause these cells to open up. One in particular is gluten. Gluten is found in wheat, rye, oats, barley, spelt, and kamut. And let's say you're eating a piece of bread made of wheat. So as the wheat passes through your small intestine, it causes your body to secrete a molecule called zonulin. Zonulin acts as the gatekeeper. It causes the cells that line your small intestine to open. And as they open, toxins can pass through, get into your bloodstream, pass it directly into your liver, and then get spread throughout your body. Now, on the, in the lining of your small intestine, there's a substance called NF-kappa B. NF-kappa B, think of it as being a guy with a flamethrower. And as these toxins pass through the lining, NF-kappa B is shooting flames at these toxins going through. So the more foods that you eat, such as more gluten products that you eat, the more frequently these cells open up and the more toxins will pass through. So the more active NF-kappa B becomes. And as NF-kappa B becomes more active, it becomes overzealous. It becomes like a trigger-happy sniper. It's not only shooting at, away at the bad guys, it's also starting to shoot flames at your own cells. And that's how autoimmune diseases. When I say autoimmune, I'm talking about conditions like Graves' disease, Hashimoto's, rheumatoid arthritis, and a whole bunch of others. And this inflammation then leads to all the major diseases like cancer, heart disease, and diabetes, and all the others I mentioned before. So the key to this whole thing is to keep the integrity of the small intestine barrier well maintained. That means you need to keep the inflammatory foods in your diet down to a minimum. We'll be talking a lot more about that on my next video. And we'll be talking about what foods to eat, what supplements to take, and lifestyle changes that will enhance that. So, this is Dr. Bernstein, and stay cool.